You are listening to Dave Sweetmore and ahead of a gig coming up at St Mary's Chambers in Rottenstall. I'm delighted to say now I'm joined by Simon Nelson from the Milltown Brothers. Simon, how are you doing, man? Very well, Dave. Yeah, thank you very much for having us today. Thanks a lot. No problem. Cheers for taking the time out to join us. We're going to talk about the gig and the future of the band shortly, but let's go right back to the beginning. You lads formed as the Milltown Brothers in Cold in 1989. How did it all start? Well, Nian, Matthew, my brother, and uh, James, they had a band at school and uh, they went to Manchester Polytechnic and before that Matthew had come down and played with my band in the south of France and uh, when that band finished uh, at sort of in sort of late 1987 when the lads started at Manchester Poly we kind of got together then and Barney our keyboard player was also at Manchester Polytechnic with with them so we kind of formed out of two bands and uh, that's how it started in sort of autumn of 1987. So, yeah, it was actually kind of formed in Manchester, really, I suppose, but obviously coming from East Lanx, uh, three of us. So, but yeah, so it was a kind of, um, obviously Matthew knew me very well and always has done, but um, yeah, for a combination of two bands, the Spire and the Milltown Brothers. Yeah. When you <laughs> formed as the Milltown Brothers, what kind of stuff were you listening to back then? Yeah, so um, I was just trying to think, back, back then it would be sort of like you had my Martin Stevenson and, and the Dainties, the Water Boys, uh, U2, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and it, it was ahead of the Manchester scene, obviously. And so like, it was kind of big guitars, kind of country, folky rock kind of vibe kind of thing. So uh, we, we always had that kind of, an REM actually, were uh, like a kind of bedrock, a reference always for us, particular, you know, from a, a songwriting, songwriting, ha- ha- you know, harmonies and the style of guitar playing. I mean, you could probably hear that in, you can of what, what we've done over the years so it was that kind of that kind of sound initially that sort of turned us on effectively after farming pretty quickly you did have a load of success from farming in 1989 till the early 90s you played at reading a couple of times you toured the usa you brought out that amazing album in 1991 slink it which was the enemy album of the year at that point in them few years what was life like for you it, it was it was great it was a great experience and and you know um wish they could have gone long on on long day, actually, if I'm perfectly honest. But we had a, a fantastic run, particularly in 1991, after which way should I jump charted? Then uh, Slinky, the album charted. We, we toured the UK. We played the Lars in the in the UK, and and we we went to the states with the wonder stuff and played with some fantastic bands and had an amazing experience and you know it, I, I always say that you know okay it could have lasted longer we, we we could have had more success however you know i personally contrast it with the experience i had with my first band the word association where we went to london and, and struggled and couldn't get a deal this was absolutely fantastic. It, it, it was a bit of a mad ride. Yeah, some of it I don't remember. <laughs> you know, use the old cliche. Although you split up for over a decade throughout the period between then and now, you still managed to release five albums over them 35 years now, from 1991's iconic Slinky album to 2020's Stockholm album. Are we likely to see any further albums on new music in the future? We hope so, Dave, yeah. I mean, this this uh, last period of, um, of playing gigs, as as you know, given us a kind of motivation, and we've seen that you know that we we, we do have a a group of people who still support us and we're really grateful for that and I, I think that you know it, it's given us a kind of motivation to to want to play new music we, we're writing new songs actually and we're planning a recording session over the summer up in possibly in the Lake District so we're hoping to release a, a, a new EP perhaps in time for the gigs that we've got booked in the autumn so yes yeah very much so yeah exciting times watch this space for a yeah. band like you it is 35 years since the Milltown Brothers burst onto the scene how much would you say the music scene has changed over them years. Well, I, I think um, that's a very good question, Dave, and 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 I've not always kept up with it. You know, we, we I guess over those times, all of us, all five of us, would have fallen in and out of music. So you, there'll be periods where you know I couldn't really tell you what what was happening. But I think it changed pretty quickly in the '90s when we were really on it, and you know, from that early sort of indie rock scene that we were part of, that kind of REM kind of sound, and then it shifted into the Manchester scene, which we we had a kind of you know we we were kind of part of that a little bit. You know, we played with a lot of those bands and then then we we missed out on the uh, brit pop 
uh, and then it morphed into pop and then there were all sorts of more, more metal sounding stuff. But I think that, that there hasn't really been a scene, has there? I don't think in the in the UK guitar kind of scene for a very long time. So uh, maybe it's time for a young sort of push of guitar bands to come through with some kind of um, nouveau 60s sound like, like in the early 90s. Well, I'm sure with you lads being out on the road this year, there's the Milltown Brothers to look at as influence, which you always have done. You've always been there. You've always been on people's minds which is brilliant friday the 3rd of may you're doing yeah. a pretty special gig in rotten stall at st mary's chambers which is pretty much a hometown gig for you lads i take it you're looking forward to that 100 yeah i mean we we spoke with danny the promoter he's been uh, he, he showed a you know he got in touch he just showed a great deal of enthusiasm and and you know he, he sold us on, on playing on playing the at st mary's chambers we went and looked around it's a great space uh it's got a great balcony with booths and everything really looking forward to it yeah so, um, yeah, pretty much hometown gig, you know. We're hoping that, you know, people come from East Lancashire, but also maybe if you come, come from Manchester as well, if anyone's listening out there and come along and check it out. We, we, you know, it's it's been, you know, we, we, we did actually play in Bono's week, um, a, a sort of small gig in December, but um, this sort of bigger size gig in East Lancashire will be our first for quite a while, yeah. You mentioned a few minutes ago that we can expect some new music later on in the year. For this gig you're doing at St Mary's Chambers, what's going to be a really special special gig what can fans expect is it going to be all the old stuff maybe a bit of new exactly yes uh Dave. and um, um, we do tend to play rely on on songs from slinky the, the first record we also play uh, like roses one of our early singles it was an independent single we'll also play stuff from a couple of songs from valve from long road uh, maybe a couple from stockholm and, and we, there's a couple of new songs kind of that pretty much there but dare we do them dare we try them out i think we should I think we should give him a whirl. You've got this gig in May at St Mary's Chambers in Rottenstall. Uh, I've noticed you've been putting the shine on lineup at yeah. Minehead, which is an amazing festival in itself. What are the plans for the future? What else have you got on for the rest of this year? So we, we, we've also, I think we're going to play a small festival up in, in Dent in, in the Lake District, uh, where James, our, our, our bass player, is living. So that's in June sometime. We're also, we've got, we're also already sold out a show at the Lexington in London on the 2nd of November. So that, it amazingly sold out in pretty much no time and as you say we're doing the shine on festival playing with the, with the bunny men I mean, how great is that so um um and then hopefully a couple of gigs in barn all week one of the things that um, we have to bear in mind is that Barney, our keyboard player, he also plays with the animals, you know, also the Rising Sun animals. And uh, he's he's been on tour a lot this year. So I think when when they calm down with their touring, we'll 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 do some more to more gigs and uh, at the end of this year and the beginning of next year as well. So uh, yeah, we're definitely up for it. <laughs> anyway, you know what? Yeah. It's just so good to see you back out and about. And when Danny, the promoter of the gig, got in touch with me and said, "I've got the Milltown Brothers doing a gig. Will you interview yeah. them and all that?" I was genuinely buzzing and excited oh, thank to, you, Dave, to yeah. do this with you it's so good that you're back out and about and obviously wish you all the best for the future and the one thing i will ask is when you get that new music out do keep in touch send it to us and we'll get right behind it 100 percent, there we'll do that thank you very much indeed for your support and thanks to danny for putting us on the milltown brothers play on friday the 3rd of may at st mary's chambers in rotten star limited tickets are still available through the venue website get down there it's going to be a really really special night simon nelson from the milltown brothers it's been a real pleasure Pleasure. Keep in touch, man, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, Dave. Thank you very much.